Good morning, and welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church in Nascapec. I am Pastor Susan Knorr. Before we begin our worship this morning, I'd like to share some things with you. For any of you who have been following the guidelines that have been put forth about returning to worship, and even though Luzerne County traditions to the green phase next Friday, we will still have many restrictions in order to return. With that said, the trustees and ad board met on Tuesday evening, and as part of those meetings, we discussed what it would look like to be able to hold in-person services once again. I've tasked the trustees to take the information that has been made available to us to create a protocol. But please understand that this will take some time for all of those guidelines to be put into place. I believe that when we're able to return to in-person worship that it will look differently for quite some time. We will still need to social distance. We will still be required to wear masks. And there will be, sadly, no congregational singing. As did you know that when we sing, the droplets from our mouths can travel as far as 26 feet. We will also not be able to share in the sacrament of communion. However, my plan at this time is to continue to record sermons for as long as possible for those who may not feel comfortable returning to worship and will include communion on the first Sunday of the month. So I encourage you to continue to follow us on Facebook, and I will keep you apprised of our progress. Shall we prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we quietly reflect on the prelude? Mm -hmm.
God's people said, Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the second chapter of Acts, verses 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those of you who may not have had the opportunity to view last Sunday's message, we celebrated Trinity Sunday and Jesus' charge to his disciples to go out into the world and to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We spent time considering how not only is this charge relevant to you and me today in the light of what has been happening in the world, it could make all the difference when it comes to how people treat one another. It would also go a long way in completely changing the trajectory of where we are headed locally, regionally, and globally. Wouldn't it be nice If when we turned on the news, there were no senseless deaths, there were no acts of physical violence, there was no destroying of property. Well, it never ceases to amaze me how God speaks and how he reassures me that what I believe he wants me to share with you is what he wants me to share with you. This happened again as I was putting the finishing touches on the message for this morning. Camp Hill United Methodist, where my daughter Katie is director of children's ministries, was having VBS this week. And because of COVID-19, they utilized social media. The theme was Rocky Railway, and Katie was the conductor and brought each night's Bible story to life on a Facebook Live. Friday night's lesson was based on Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47, And I had no idea that was the scripture until I tuned in to watch her. She shared with the children what it meant to be a good friend to each other, just like the early Christians were good friends to each other. Well, our scripture passage this morning also comes from the second chapter of Acts and is subtitled, The Fellowship of Believers. I guess it's just another way of showing what it meant to be good friends. I want us to explore for a while this morning just exactly what it meant to be the church at a time that was fraught with fear. The book of Acts was written by the Apostle Luke approximately 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and was a sequel to the Gospel of Luke. Acts describes the early church, a church begun by just a few believers and after they had been empowered by the Holy Spirit, the church grows and grows. In fact, it is as if the church as they know it explodes despite extreme opposition and persecution. They share with others the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the good news of his saving grace, bringing others into the fellowship of believers. If we were to look back in the second chapter, Luke writes about how the remaining 11 went about the process of choosing the 12th, wanting to choose someone who had been with them, who had traveled with them, had experienced the life and death of Christ. Therefore, they chose Matthias. We would also read that these believers were all together in one place when there was suddenly a sound and blowing of a violent wind that came from heaven, filling the whole house. And they witnessed the tongues of fire that touched each of them, as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, what we know as Pentecost, the birth of the church, which we celebrated just a few short weeks ago. In one of the commentaries that I read surrounding this, the author writes that this is the dividing line in human history, and that it's because on this date, and for the first time, 
The Holy Spirit is available to everyone, every man, woman, and child. From this point on, the Holy Spirit will never leave. Many who were there that day accepted Jesus Christ, becoming themselves believers. Fast forward to verse 42, which tells us that these new believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. What struck me in this verse was the word devoted. Dictionary.com defines devote as, I quote, to concentrate on a particular pursuit, occupation, purpose, or cause, end quote. The fellowship of believers concentrated on learning what it meant to be a fellowship. Luke goes on to tell us that they spent time together, often selling their own personal belongings to give to others in the group that were in need. They met on a daily basis, eating meals together, praising God together, and welcoming new believers into the fellowship. But where did they meet? Luke writes that they met together in the temple courts. But why would they do that if they had accepted Jesus Christ? They would no longer maintain their Jewish heritage by continuing to follow the Torah, the Hebrew Bible. However, in the research that I did, I discovered that many of the new believers did go to the temple courts, where as devout Jews, they would have traditionally gathered twice a day. And these new believers continue to do that in order to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many as they could. Other times throughout the day, they would meet in each other's homes to break bread together with glad and sincere hearts. We also need to understand that because of the persecution that they faced, these early Christians often had to hide their gatherings. So it would stand to reason that meeting in homes would make them a bit less conspicuous. There are also indications that early Christians met in other places, such as warehouses or apartment buildings. They met wherever and whenever they could, and not just for an hour once a week. Would it surprise you to know that church buildings, as it were, didn't come into play until the Emperor Constantine recognized Christianity as a legal religion in the year 1313? I've shared with you on many occasions that there are scripture passages that I call upon in certain situations in order to give me comfort. And one of those is Romans 8:28. All things, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If there's one thing that I've gained from this pandem pandemic and the inability to hold in-person worship is that we need to change our verbiage. We need to change the way we utilize the word church. First, I'll share with you that it sets my teeth on edge when anyone stated we need to open our churches, inferring that our church was closed. So I'll speak for here at Wesley. We have never been closed. We may not be holding weekly services inside our building, but we are open. And the message in both word and music is available. And mission and ministry is still going on. Secondly, I've often heard folks say, I miss going to church. Now let me reassure you, I get that. I also miss being in the sanctuary on a Sunday morning with all of you. However, one of the reasons that I believe that first century Christianity grew in numbers as quickly as it did is that they had many things in common. A passionate love for Jesus Christ despite the fear of retribution and even death the desire to be family, to spend time with one another, no matter where that was, as they didn't have a church building in which to do so. We need to recognize that they truly were the fellowship of believers because for many of them, those other believers were the only family they had. So what does all of this mean to you and me? What does it mean to be the fellowship believers in the world in which we live today? I was speaking to a friend of mine who's the pastor of two churches in Tyrone. 
She shared with me that she has been feeling lately that when her churches return to in-person worship, that she'll be going back a different person. That this time has showed her that we can't return to the way things have always been done and that it does not necessarily have anything to do with COVID-19. She said that her desire was to challenge her congregations to be the hands and feet and love of Jesus Christ in new ways and beyond Sunday mornings and the four walls of a building. Several years ago, one of our United Methodist churches in Sealands Grove suffered a devastating fire which caused that congregation to be unable to worship there. Did they cease to be the church just because they had no building in which to meet? No. They held their services at their picnic pavilion, and they continued to be the church, God's people. We are called to be the same. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, stir up in us a desire to be the church you want us to be. Not a church that it is of brick and mortar, but a church that is of flesh and bones. May we all be intentional about worshiping together, however that may look. Sharing our lives with one another and learning better how to love our neighbors and you. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen.